So I'm here to talk about our research in stress detection. Stress is bad for you in many different ways. It makes people make mistakes that they wouldn't otherwise make. It makes people chronically ill. Uh, and it's something that gets created in people when they're doing bad things or wrong things, such as stealing information or committing fraud. So if, if we had a, a good way to detect stress, we could head off a lot of the bad effects of stress. And in fact, we do have good ways of detecting stress. So we can detect it by the amount of cortisol in your bloodstream or the amount of cortisol in your saliva. Or we can detect it by listening to your heartbeat in various rhythms. But these are all inconvenient methods of detecting stress. And certainly nobody wants to walk around with a, a heart rate monitor on them, right? Or a cortisol monitor stuck into their vein. So maybe it would be a good idea if we had some other way to detect stress. One of those ways might be by looking at the way that you type. <clears throat> so people tend to have a normal typing rhythm, and you know this uh, as well as I do, because when you type your password, you type it with a particular rhythm, and, and, and if you want to just stop for a moment and try that out, you'll see that you have your own special rhythm when you type your password, and you could imagine that I cannot type your password in that very same rhythm. And what that means is two things. One is a computer that's monitoring how your password is typed could tell that it was not you typing the password, and so it would deny access if I tried to type your password. On the other hand, then we can use it to identify you. So if we know that your particular rhythm matches your identity, then we know that it's you when you log in, and we can use that as what we call two-factor authentication, where one factor is the password itself, and the other factor is the rhythm with which you type the password. Now, you could imagine that there might be certain things that would disturb your natural rhythm of typing. One of those things might be stress. So stress could disturb your rhythm in various ways. It could cause you to type faster. It might cause you to type slower. It might cause you to type some things faster and some things slower. And if that was true, then we would know that you are under stress. So in a safety critical system like air traffic control, we might be able to know that you're stressed out by examining your typing behavior. And we could say, look, maybe you should take a break. Maybe you should get a colleague to relieve you for 10 or 15 minutes so that you don't make a critical mistake in air traffic safety. On the other hand, if you are trying to steal information from your corporation or from your government and your typing behavior at the keyboard reveals that you're under stress, maybe the system could call a security officer who could come and have a wee chat with you and find out exactly what it is that you're doing. So our research involves trying to get some idea of people's baseline characteristics in typing to induce stress in the laboratory, and then have people type again, and we ask, is there a difference between normal baseline neutral behavior and stressed behavior? And it turns out that there is. We ran 116 people in what's called a single subject ABA design study, and in that study, it was determined that we have a 100% success rate, we, can, we could tell with every subject whether they were stressed or not, and in this particular case, everybody was stressed, so we had a, a zero error rate. With more time, I'd be happy to tell you the details of how this worked out, but at this point, I need to refer you to the upcoming paper that will be published next year. Thank you so much.